Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. Today is May 1st. Coming around the corner this weekend is Star Wars Day. And it's a very special one because we're celebrating 25 years of the Lego Star Wars theme, as well as 25 years since Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, came out. And as I'm sure you're all very much aware at this point, we have a new line of uh, Legos coming out this weekend. Um, and I do say loosely this weekend, because if you're a member of the Lego Insiders, like myself, you could have already ordered all of them by now. Uh, I already picked up the Interceptor, uh, and I am very much looking forward to some of the other sets that are coming out. I'll get them later on. Um, but you might be wondering, like I was, why did they choose the... TIE Interceptor to launch on Star Wars Day when we're celebrating the prequels, Episode 1. I mean, the easy answer is because last year we got the updated UCS X-Wing set. And they want to have sort of like a modern counterpart to that, which I understand. But you could have launched that at any point later on down the line, and it'd be just fine. Um, but we're so, like I said, we're celebrating episode one. Why? Why not have an episode one based UCS set? Like it, I really don't understand how they missed this huge, massive opportunity. And you might say, oh well. It's because they, they, the UCS sets are really big and they plan them out um, at least a year in advance because they got to design it and get it okayed and fine tune it. And it's a whole involved process. And yes, yes it is. But the whole point there is that they prepare a couple years in advance for it. And with all the other things coming out in this wave... They're doing the Droidica. They're, the gift with purchase, the big one, is the uh, Trade Federation Troop Carrier. And they've got a whole bunch of other, other things that are not branded, but they're geared towards celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Phantom Menace. Like, we're also getting another um, Darth Maul's... Sith Infiltrator. It's our third one that we've gotten. Um, and they're generating so much hype because this is a really big event. It's the 25th anniversary of two things. Like, why not? Why not go episode one? And I was thinking about this and I was going through my head of all the other things they could have done. Because we haven't had a prequel UCS set since the beginning, and then a couple years ago. It took 20 years between them to get another prequel UCS set. Uh, the original wave had the Naboo Starfighter and the really weird-looking bust of Darth Maul. And then just a couple years ago, we got the uh, Republic gunship, which everyone was super excited about. Uh, they even let us vote on what they what we wanted i forget exactly what it was it was it was between the gunship i think the tie bomber and there was a third one i don't remember but they were, were both the other two options were both original trilogy and obviously the gunship won and but it took 20 years for us to get another prequel ucs set and i just wanted to show some stuff that they could have done. Uh, I have this book here from 1999. It came out just after the movie did. And I just wanted to show you guys, they had options. There were so many different things they could have done. First of which is the Republic Cruiser. Now we already had one of these and it came out in 2006 or seven. We had a play set of the Republic Cruiser. Um, and then the, it's basically just 
the same as the 2011 Republic Frigate, but that was from the Clone Wars series. So that's episode two. The Republic Cruiser. This is what Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon take to get to the Trade Federation blockade of Naboo. This is a Republic diplomatic cruiser. It has no weapons. And it was, it was used for consular missions. Uh, this specific one is the Radiant 7. Now, we have had a ship. We've had a set of this ship. So, it, like, technically two. We've had this one and then the generic Republic frigate. So, it's not outside of their wheelhouse to make one of these. But they've also had um, the Tantive 4. I don't know how many times. They've had three UCSs of that. And this is the ship that would later on, like this design, would later on become what we see with the uh, the Tan of Four. This is the direct predecessor, basically. Um, and let's have a, a quick mo moment of silence for the uh, the pilot and co-pilot because they are in the Star Wars timeline in the movies the first casualties because the Trade Federation blows up the ship and they're the first people we see die on screen this easily could have been one and then the very next page the landing ship we've never had one of these unless I'm missing one from like a advent calendar maybe I don't know but We've never had a, a Trade Federation landing ship set. This would be amazing to have. You could have little MTTs, little ATTs. They've got so many. Like, these are massive ships. Never had this set before. Uh, the MTT. A lot of people like these. I myself have a custom-built one. I ordered a, a, a building kit for it. I'm going to show you over here. Like... That right there. It's huge. Like, very easily, we could have this. Oh, but it's all brown. Yeah, well, like I just showed you, that one's all brown. We've had multiple of these are all brown. Look at the, the, the Star Destroyers, the UCS Star Destroyers. We've had, in various forms, four of them. You've got the Venator that just came out. That at least has a nice big strip of red on it. You've had two versions of the Star Destroyer, plus you've had the Super Star Destroyer. All three of those ones are literally just big gray wedges. So the whole monochrome thing wouldn't have been an issue. <sighs> this would have been great to see. You'd fill it with a bunch of droids. Um, oh, another one that's basically monochrome, the Moss Eisley Cantina. That's a UCS set, then it's almost entirely tan. You know, there's no reason why they couldn't have done this one. Uh, the Gungan sub. We just had a remake of this set oh, last year, year before that, something like that. It was fairly recent. This would have been a fantastic option for a UCS set. The very next page. God forbid they ever make one of these. People have been asking for a Royal Starship set for years. But I don't think we're ever going to get one because... Simply just how much chrome is in this. You'd have to have every external piece chromed, which they don't do those anymore. I think it's mostly because it's more complicated to make them. And the big one is when they ship it, stuff's going to get scuffed and scratched. You have that on regular pieces these days. But the chrome ones are going to be really, really awful. Um... I do know that the original Naboo Starfighter had chrome on it, and I don't remember if they've ever done chrome on a ship since. Um, this would be amazing to have, though. You could easily give us a new Queen Amidala. You can give us um, a uh, pilot Rick Olay figure. I mean, this is in the timeline the first time we meet R2-D2. You know, this would be great. Literally 
any of the pod racers, but most notably Anakin's or Sebulba's. The, I think Sebulba's pod racer would be the fantastic option, but you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You have 18 different options here. M you know, granted, se 16 of them are basically point not pointless but obscure really um but the two main ones so bulbas would be fantastic anakin's would be iconic it'd be great to have these um and then you could have like a bunch of the other ones as small little ones in like another set or something that's a thick page uh here i mean just look at them side by side this would be great Sith Infiltrator. We just got a playscale version of this in this wave. And we've already had two previous ones. I actually have them. I have the original, I have the re-release, and then I will probably pick up the new one. This would have been fantastic. It wouldn't have been too hard to design. You'd be able to put a bunch of uh, play features in it, and it, you only have to include a single Darth Maul figure. But, you know, have him with the hood and the robes and everything. And you can go all out on his speeder bike. This would be super easy. People would buy this. I would buy this. It'd be great. Darth Maul was one of the best characters of all time. Back when he came out. He was insane. They could have done a droid starfighter. Make it sort of like a smaller scale UCS. But it would have been easy. And you'd be able to put in the functions where you've got the, the legs opening probably have missiles you can shoot and have it be able to go to walking mood. What is in here? Ah, the Lucra Hulk. Now this is the big one. Look at that guy. We've never had one of these as a set. Um, and just like with the Star Destroyer, it'd just be a big gray thing, but you could add a bunch of little details. And you'd even be able to have the uh, droid control uh, center, basically, detachable. Because they have those in the shows and, and the movies and stuff, where it's just that. Because that's the main command area, and the rest of this is just, like, cargo space. Like, and then here, you see all these troop carriers in here? The transports? And then the tiny little MTTs. Like, the massive scale of this. You could have had little tiny little guys in there. It's so many things. And I, we're only halfway through the book, basically. I mean, we're a little further than halfway. We're mostly through the book. But the original... One of the original UCS sets easily could have been done again as a more modern, slightly bigger, more detailed version. And you would only have to do a little bit of chroming. It would have been so nice to get a redo of the Nabu Starfighter. And then, uh, hell, I'd even take an AAT. You get a stab next to it, you only need like a pilot and a command droid. Those are your two minifigures. This would be super easy to make. Uh, and then, I don't know if they would do the uh, the speeder. It wasn't that relevant. All it does is shoot a tank and then dip out. And we, I don't think we even see that one. And that's non, a non-thing. This, though, I'm super excited to get this as the gift with purchase. It's basically the only reason why I'm buying the Interceptor is to get that because you have to spend 160 and uh, I used my points to get 50 bucks off so I, only, I got my Interceptor for 180 so it's a pretty decent deal. Um, I was talking to my wife about all of this and her suggestion was they could have done a life-size B1 battle droid and honestly that'd be amazing. Um, Another thing they could have done is, like, if they want to roll the memes, they could have done what they did with the the 
the buildable uh, Chewbacca from a couple years ago. Is that what, one or two years ago? And do a Jar Jar Binks. I mean, they've already done Chewbacca. They did a, a, a full build of General Grievous. Why not keep that going? It'd be interesting. Hell, they could even have done a remake of the Darth Maul bust. It's a little weird, but you'd be able to make it a lot more detailed. And it'd be a perfect callback to the original line. But we're getting the Interceptor, and I can only hope that someday we get more prequel sets. Because I'm getting really tired of all these original trilogy sets. I'd even take a sequel set for the UCS, and I hated those movies. I, I would even take one of those. Rogue One, they've got some options in there too, but man, they're really hammering us with those original trilogy. We've had three Tantive Fours. We've had three X-Wings. We've had two Star Destroyers. We've had the B-Wing, the at -AT, um, the Y-Wing, the A-Wing, TIE Interceptor, Another TIE Interceptor is just coming out. I'm sure there's a few others I'm forgetting, but it's like, we need we need more prequel stuff. We seriously do. Lego, do better, please. Um, and hey, I even have a pocket edition. <laughs> uh, anyway, let me know what sets you guys are planning on getting and uh, which sets you wish they would make for the UCS series. That'd be so cool to get some of these things, and I'd really like to hear what you guys think. Uh, anyways, like and subscribe, do the whole YouTube thing, and I will see you guys on the next one. And may the Force be with you.